In this lecture we are going to continue studying about compound types and here we are going to discuss in detail about pointers. So in the previous lecture we have seen about references and here we will see in detail about what are pointers. Alright, so let's get started. So we have been discussing about compound types in the previous lecture and we have already said that a compound type is a type that is defined in terms of another type. So we have seen examples of compound types, specifically references and pointers and we have already studied about references in the previous lecture. So in this lecture we are going to study in detail about pointers. So we will see what are pointers, what they are used for, how they are different from references and how they work. So coming to pointers, a pointer is a compound type that points to another type. So pointer is also a compound type and what it does is, it is also pointing to another type. So from the name itself we can understand pointer. What does a pointer do? It is going to point to another type. So they are used for indirect access to other objects. So we are using pointers for indirectly accessing other objects. So, so far from these definitions that we have seen, it looks a little bit similar to the references. But we will see now what are the differences between references and pointers and what makes pointers different from references. So talking about the differences from references, a pointer is an object on its own right. So why do I say that a pointer is an object in its own right? Because when we studied about references, we said that references are always bound to another type. So we could never declare a reference without initializing it. We have to always mention in the beginning itself to what the reference is being bound. But a pointer is different. A pointer is an object in its own right. So it does not have to point to something in the beginning itself. Though the purpose of pointer is to point to another type, but even if you don't make it point to anything even in the beginning, it is still alright. Now pointers can be assigned and copied. A single pointer can point to several different objects over its lifetime. Now here is another difference. In case of references, we saw that once a reference is declared and initialized, it is always bound to that object to which it is initialized. And then during its lifetime, we can never rebind that reference to another type. It will only be bound to one type that we initialize in the beginning. But pointers are different here again. A single pointer can point to several different objects over its lifetime. So we may declare and define a pointer and then we can make it point to a certain object and later that same pointer can be made to point to a different object. So that is possible. So we see that that is a difference from references. And then a pointer need not be initialized at the time it is defined. So again in case of references we saw that we always need to initialize a reference when it is defined. Otherwise we saw that it was throwing errors. But in case of pointers we don't have to necessarily initialize the pointer at the time of its definition. So that is another difference that we have between pointers and references. Alright so these were the differences between references and pointers. Now let's see how we can define pointers. So coming to pointer definition, pointer definitions are done like this. We have an asterisk symbol followed by D where D is the name being defined. So D is the name that we are giving to the pointer. So D can be anything but the most important thing is this asterisk symbol that has to be preceded before the name. So if you put an asterisk symbol before the name then that shows that that is going to be a pointer. So let's take some examples. So here in this example I have an integer pointer called IP1. So the name of the pointer is IP1, it is of the type integer and how do I know that it is a pointer? Because it is preceded with an asterisk symbol. So similarly IP2 is also a pointer of the type integer and because it is preceded by the asterisk symbol we can say that it is a pointer. So both IP1 and IP2 are pointers to integers. Now here I have another declaration double DP comma then asterisk DP2. Now what does this mean? I am declaring a simple variable called dp which is of the type double. So this is not a pointer, this is a normal variable. And then here I am declaring a pointer which is called dp2 and it is of the type double. So dp2 is a pointer to double whereas dp is just a normal or simple double variable. So these are some examples of how we can define pointers. Okay, so we have seen the difference between pointers and references and we also saw how pointers are defined. Now what actually are pointers? What is there inside a pointer? Or what is a pointer actually pointing to? Now that is what we need to find out. So we come to the question, 
What do pointers hold? What is inside a pointer? So this is the most important thing and this is what will make us understand what pointers are pointing to. So let's see. So a pointer holds the address of another object. So this is the most important thing that we need to remember about pointers. Pointer holds the address of another object. So it is the address of another object that is contained inside a pointer. So a pointer points to an object using the address of that object. Now we get the address of an object by using the address of operator which is this ampersand operator. So if you want to get the address of an object, now what do we mean by address? We know that each variable that we are having in C++, it is stored in our memory. And when it is stored in memory, it is stored in a particular address. Each memory location will have an address. So if you want to know the address where an object is stored, then we are going to make use of this ampersand operator, which is known as the address of operator. So if you put this ampersand before the object, then we will get the address at which that object is stored. So let's take some examples. So here in this example, I am declaring a simple variable of the name iVal and it is of the type integer and I am initializing it to the value 50. So iVal has 50 in it and it is just of the type integer. Now next, I am declaring a pointer. So how do I know it is a pointer? Because the name is asterisk p. So this asterisk symbol signifies that this is a pointer. And what am I storing inside the pointer? I am storing the address of iVal. Now how do I know it is the address of iVal? Because before this iVal, I am using this ampersand symbol, which is the address of operator. So if I put this ampersand symbol before iVal, it is going to give me the address where this iVal is stored in memory. And that address, we are storing it to the pointer P. So P holds the address of iVal. And so we say that P is a pointer to iVal. So P is pointing to iVal because P is holding the address of iVal. So this is the address of operator, this ampersand symbol. Now if I print the value of P, what will be the output? So if I just say C out P, what should be the output? So as I said, P is a pointer and it is storing the address of iVal. So if I simply print P, it is going to give me the address held in pointer P. So if I print P like this, the address of iVal will be printed. Now what if I want to print the value that is in iVal? That means we know that P is pointing to iVal. P is having the address of iVal and we know that in that address iVal, there is a value that is stored which is 50. Now if I want to print 50, what will I do? I can print it using asterisk P. Now this asterisk P is different from this declaration or definition here. So whenever you are defining a pointer, we use the asterisk symbol like this. But when you are printing using the cout statement, this asterisk p means the value that is stored in the address pointed by p. So if I say cout asterisk p, it is going to check what is the address that is being held in p. So it will find that the address that is held in p is the address of iVal. And then it will check what is the value that is stored in iVal. The value that is stored in iVal is 50. So this 50 will be printed if I print asterisk p. So that is how the pointers work. So just remember these few simple things. First of all, this ampersand operator is known as the address of operator and that is going to give us the address. And then when we initialize or when we define a pointer, we have to use asterisk symbol. And when we print it, when we just print p, it is going to give the address that is stored in pointer p. And then when we print asterisk p, it is going to print the value. So simple p is the address and asterisk p is the value. So remember these important things about pointers. Okay, so we will take an example program now to understand whatever we have discussed so far. Okay, so here in this example program, I have this main function. And inside the main function, I am declaring a variable iVal of the type integer and we are initializing it with the value 50. And then here I have a pointer p, which is also of the type integer and I am storing the address of iVal. So p is a pointer pointing to iVal. Okay, now here I am trying to print the values. So I am printing c out iVal equal to iVal. Then in a new line, I am trying to print the value of p, this one p. And again in a new line, I am trying to print the value of asterisk p. So I am printing asterisk p here. So what should be the output? So according to what we have studied so far, 
If I print the value of iVal here like this, it should print 50. Okay. And if I print the value of P, what should it print? P is holding the address of iVal. So if I simply print P, it should give me the address of iVal. And then if I print asterisk P, what should it print? As we already said, if we print asterisk P, it is going to print the value of the address that is pointed by P. So P is pointing to the address of iVal and iVal is having the value 50. So 50 should be printed here. Okay, so we will check it when we run it in the Visual Studio code. But let's move ahead in the program now. So here in this next line, I am changing the value of star P to 51. Now what will happen here? So whenever I modify the pointer in this way, it is also going to affect the object to which it points. So we know that asterisk P contains the value of the address that is pointed by P. Now what is P pointing to? P is pointing to iVal. Now if I change star P equal to 51, it is going to even change that iVal to 51 because P is actually a pointer pointing to iVal. So if I print the new value of iVal, iVal is going to give me 51 because by doing this, I am changing even the value of iVal. Okay, now I am printing the new P. So what will be the new P? So P is actually the address. So it is the address of iVal. So we did not change the address. We are not messing with the address. The address is going to remain the same. So if I print the value of P, it should actually give me the address of iVal. And then new asterisk P. What is it going to be? It is also going to be 51 because we changed it here. Okay. Now in the next line, I am changing the value of iVal now. So I'm not changing the value of the pointer, but the variable iVal. Now if I change the value of iVal to 52, what will be the new values? Let's see. The new iVal will be equal to 52. So here we can expect 52. And what will be the new P? So here if I print P again, P is nothing but the address of iVal. So again, we did not change the address. So the same address is going to be printed here. Now, what will be the value of new asterisk p? So, asterisk p is the value that is contained in the address that is pointed by p. So, p is pointing to iVal and iVal is now having the value 52. So, this 52 will be printed even here. So, that is what we can expect from what we have studied so far. So, let's run this program in Visual Studio Code and see if it is working as we expected and explained. So, coming to Visual Studio Code here, I have written down the same program that we have seen. I have just given some lines like this in order to make it visually look better when we get the output. Okay, so let me run this program. The name of the program is pointers.cpp. So I type g++ pointers.cpp and I press enter. So we see the program got compiled successfully. There are no errors. So let me run the default output file. So I type dot slash a dot exe and I press enter. And here is our output. So in the first case, iVal was equal to 50 and p is pointing to iVal. So if you print iVal, it is 50 and P, if I print, as I said, it should give the address of iVal, which is this one. So this 0x61fe14 is the address of the variable iVal. Okay. And then if I print star P or asterisk P, it is going to print 50. So asterisk P, as I said, is the value of the address that is pointed by P. So whatever value is contained in the address that is being pointed by P will be printed. So P is pointing to this address. And what is there in this address? iVal is there. What is the value of iVal? 50. So 50 is printed. Okay. Now here when I changed star P equal to 51, then what happens? So we see the new iVal is 51 and the address remains the same because we are accessing the same location, but we have just changed the value. So the location remains the same. So the address is the same as before and star P also becomes 51. So as we already explained, since we are changing the value that is pointed by P. So that iVal also got changed. So iVal now becomes 51 and because of that asterisk P is also equal to 51. Now similarly, in the third case, we changed iVal to 52 and we printed the new iVal, new P and new asterisk P. So what happens? New iVal becomes 52 because we changed it and address remains the same because the address or the location remains the same. We did not change anything. And then what will be the new asterisk P? It is equal to 52. Why? Because iVal, it changed to 52. Now star P will give the value that is there in the address that is pointed by P. So that is 52. 
So here the important thing to remember is that whether we change the variable or the pointer that is pointing to it, it is affecting both the variable or that object and the pointer's value itself. But the address is remaining the same. So if you get this concept clear, you will be clear about pointers. Okay, so that was the example and I hope you have understood how pointers work using this example. Now next we will see some examples of pointer definitions. So we will see some valid as well as invalid definitions and see how they work. So coming to the examples, here I am declaring a variable of the type double and it is called dval. So dval is the name and it is of the type double. So this is a simple declaration or definition. Next, I am declaring a pointer called pd of the type double and I am initializing it with the address of dval. So ampersand shows that it is the address of dval that is being stored to this pointer pd. And how do we know it is a pointer? Because it is preceded by this asterisk symbol. So this is okay, this is a proper definition. So the initializer is the address of a double. Okay, next. So here I am again declaring another pointer called pd2 and I am storing pd into it. So what is pd? pd is also a pointer. So this pointer contains the address of this dval. So that same thing I am storing to pd2 as well. So both of them are pointers of the type double and because of that it is a valid definition. So initializer is a pointer to a double and it is fine. Now in the next one I am saying that integer pi equal to pd. So I am declaring a pointer called pi of the type integer and I am trying to store pd into it. Now here it is going to throw an error. Why? Because the types of pi and pd are different. So let's see here. I am declaring a pointer of the type integer but what is pd? pd is a pointer of the type double. So pi is an integer, pd is a double. So there is a type mismatch. So we cannot store address of a different type to a pointer which is of another type. So that is why it is going to throw an error here. There is a type mismatch. Now next, here I am saying pi equal to ampersand dval. So what is pi? pi is a pointer and to this pointer I am trying to store the address of dval. Now again this is an error. Why? Assigning the address of a double to a pointer to integer. So we know that pi was declared as an integer pointer. But what is dval? dval is a variable of the type double. So we are trying to put the address of an object of the type double into an integer type pointer and again there is a type mismatch. This is an integer, this is a double. So again there is going to be an error here. Okay, so these are some examples of valid and invalid pointer definitions. Now there is one more topic that we need to study. So let's see what are these. So here I am defining three pointers p1, p2, p3 and p1 I am initializing it like this null ptr and to p2 I am putting null and in p3 I am saying it is equal to zero. So what are these? These are known as null pointers. So what are null pointers? A null pointer is a pointer that does not point to any object. So we already said that it is not necessary to initialize a pointer at the time of definition itself. So we can just define a pointer without pointing to anything. So these are null pointers that does not point to anything. So how do we define null pointers? These are three ways in which you can define null pointers. You can mention the type of the pointer, the asterisk, name of the pointer and you can say NULLPTR. So this is a keyword. So you can say NULLPTR or you can say it is equal to null. -L so this is also a keyword or you can say it is equal to zero. So these three pointers are not pointing to anything at the moment. So these are known as null pointers. So whenever you are defining a pointer and if you are not initializing it to anything, then what happens? It will become a pointer that will have an undefined value just like normal primitive data types. So it is always better to initialize a pointer to null if you are not sure to what it is going to be pointed at the moment. So this is a good practice to initialize a pointer as a null pointer if you don't know what it is going to point to at the moment. So that is about null pointers. Okay, so with that I hope you have understood the compound type called pointers and what they are used for, how they are different from references and what do pointers hold how they can be defined and we have also seen the valid and invalid definitions and also we have seen about null pointers. So with that I hope you have got an idea about pointers. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.